Here, look, get the, get one of these going with the torque wrench, like a side view, and then I can take a picture of the chain drive. It'd be like, how to chain drive install video, the Cruzy Originals. Big blown up thumbnail, and all you're gonna do is listen to a shit talk each other for fucking eons. Hi guys, I'm Ryan Cruzy, Cruzy Originals. I'm two weeks almost into having fucking disc replacement in my neck. Got some weird knife wound right here. It's healing up pretty good, feels weird. So Trent's gonna be doing the work today. I'm gonna be doing the talking and the telling him what to do and that kind of thing. We're gonna set up a chain drive kit on this. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure I have everything here to measure it all in and everything. I don't have the wheels we're gonna run, which I'd prefer to set it to the wheels that we we're gonna run, but if I have to, I can just machine those hubs and I'll make everything set up right. We're gonna laser it in. I'm gonna talk about why and how you do things with a chain drive kit and why we set ours up that way. We got a whole bunch more stuff to do with this, but as it goes with building custom shit, it has to be done in stages. So I can get the chain drive kit mocked up and set up today and we'll go over that stuff. But then I need the wheels, which we're supposed to be able to pick the wheels up today too but then they got to go to powder coat but they're just raw cut from jade affiliate he cut them for us and then we're gonna take them to all valley powder coat get them powder coated gold everything on this bike's gonna be black it's gonna be all blacked out but it's got some gold rims and then some gold accents painted in the bags and some gold accents painted in the gas tank which these are getting picked up to go to paint today too i hope they're supposed to get picked up friday but we had to go down to tucson and pick up a new welder i think that's it when this thing's all done you guys can win this bike you just gotta follow this series because as soon as it's done, we'll go, hey, it's done. And then you can start, you know, doing whatever it takes to win this bike when the type comes. It's gonna be a, uh, probably, sorry, my throat don't last long. It's gonna be like a one week time frame of being able to win the bike. So you gotta stay posted, follow the Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook, but that's a waste of time, honestly. Uh, and like, subscribe, and stay posted to the YouTube because we're giving this away and we're also giving away a whole bunch of prizes and shit as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can win during this event right here. So stay posted, keep watching, and you probably learn some shit and you'll get to see this thing built because it's going to be fucking nasty. I wanted to boost it really bad, but I think that deal's kind of gone to shit. So I think we're going to build the motor a little bit. I have a couple cams here. I need, they're pretty big ass cams though, so I kind of need to do a little looking into what this motor can handle and what's going to work the best. We're probably going to put a stealth exhaust on it. We've got a SNS intake set up for it, we're going to do, and uh, maybe a Harley Davidson cam. I've got a Harley cam and I've got a Zippers cam. They're both big cams though, <laughs> so we'll see. And then we'll probably tune it ourselves with Power Vision. That's it. Trent's pooping. As soon as it gets done, we're gonna start chaining. Chain gang. We need to take this belt off. And normally how I take this belt off is I have some tin snips and I go and I cut it right off and throw it in the trash. But this is a brand new soft tail belt. We don't really have any of these. I usually cut them in the trash because we got a shit little belts in the back, but save it. Do it the right way, and we'll show you how to take a belt off of a soft tail, which this is something you'll never probably see us do again once we have this one belt in the back room. <laughs> first things first, pull the wheel out. Uh, you got to pull the whole inner and outer primary off. All this shit has to come off. If you don't know how to do this, you shouldn't be even worried about replacing your belt yourself anyways, because this is pretty serious right here. Don't think I have the right front sprocket, but I'm gonna laser some shit in and do a little different measurements and see if I can make it work. It's just that the offset is different than what I normally use. I think it will work, but I'm gonna have to do some checking. We're gonna set that shit up. Trent's gonna pull the wheel out. We're gonna just mock up, bolt the sprocket to the wheel because we're not gonna run these wheels, so I'm not gonna like lock tight and torque the sprockets down. We're just gonna get everything bolted up, lasered in, lined up so I can torque this guy and then put all this shit back together. Yeah, here he comes with his little toolbox. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> this wheel and tire will be for sale. Twelve hundred bucks. You pay for shipping. 
So this is the first good thing they ever did on a soft tail. These two bolts right here, there's a spacer right here and you take it out and you can pull this guy out. You used to have to pull, oh my God, you still gotta pull the fucking pivot shaft though. Yeah, hold on, this shit. get the shears. Fuck this, we're cutting this oh, off. Man. I'm not doing all that shit right now. Fucking horse shit. You gotta pull the pivot shaft, plus you used to have to pull the swing arm. Now they have a spacer so you can loop it through the swing arm, which saves you that shit. That, we're cutting it off with shears. Try number two. Put a nice buckle on this, buckle feathers in there. That's what the belt's for. So anytime you put a sprocket on, you should always blow those holes out really good, then run a thread chaser through them, and then blow them out again and get every single bit of old Loctite out of the holes. And make sure there's no burrs, none of that shit. Torquing a sprocket is a fucking science that if you don't do right, your bolts strip, shear, vibrate loose, and you have all kinds of problems. That is why they come loose, that is why they break, that is why it always happens. It is a bad install, 100% of the time. Lockers and all that gimmick ass bullshit is nothing. Just install it properly. Boo -doo, boo -boo, take it back. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Mm. Mm -hmm. Word up, I'm gonna send Nun Nuts over when he gets back. Fuck yeah, gonna pick up them wheels. Uh, normally, we run grade 8 bolts and a lock washer, a grade 8 lock washer on everything. No regular washer, just grade 8 bolt lock washer to the sprocket so it digs into the sprocket itself. We're not going to do that right now because this is going to come back apart when the other wheels are ready. We're going to use a regular washer just so we don't eat the wheel up or f the powder coat up with the lock washer because that's going to be like a final install type thing. It's, it's, it's in there, it's in there. Put it all back in there with uh, all the spacers and shit. Don't scratch my fucking sprocket there, bud. And don't bend the fucking chain cover there. I'm not going to the gym right now because I can't. And so I'm just gonna fast until 11 or whatever the fuck and eat chicken and rice. So I don't get real fat in the next okay, six months. Here's what I found. Crazy hot chicken. Why, why are you even looking up things right now, motherfucker? That's probably actually going to be the best one. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. I kind of just run the laser off of here to here. This stuff's all lined up, dialed in, so nothing's cockeyed. And I just put the laser on. It's on the inside of the teeth, so I know I need to be at least a quarter inch plus uh, 3 16 past that for the laser for how it sits. So we're going to start with a half inch, throw it on there, and then we'll take some precise measurements again, and we'll probably put like a lot of different spacers on this thing before I'm happy. Got real lucky because I'll be real honest we have chain drive kits for these already and me and Trent were both too lazy to look in our book to see what sprocket it took so we're like I think it's this one I'm like I don't think that's that one it was kind of we don't really remember so we're doing this whole measuring in thing but I'm almost positive that this is the exact setup that we use in our chain drive kits if I just would have looked in my book no no, no it's, it's a flat yeah it's seven flat eighths on flat. six feet but these are different than those guys, they're way different than the twin cam. Yeah. yeah. So I got... What fucking on? Alright. Dialed. This is going to stay the way it is because we got a different wheel coming. But we can break, set the chain up, so get this guy... Actually, throw the, let's put the chain on and then it'd be easier to torque this shit. Mm -hmm. 
So get the chain on, pull this bitch up all the way to the front. Mm -hmm. uh, let's set the chain up, I'll show them how to do that. I'll show you how to use a chain breaker for rivet style because all of our chain kits come with the rivet style master links because they are the best. Uh, but you gotta have a rivet style machine to put them together, which you can get at Harbor Freight. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So 24, 53, not normally what we'd run on a late model six speed. Normally we'd run a 24, 55. I like to gear them down quite a bit because six gear is way too tall and the compensator sprockets are way too big. So you can gear them down considerably to a 55. They rip really hard and you can still cruise 100 miles an hour on the freeway all day long. But this, this is a 53, it's a little bit shorter so it's gonna have more bottom in, it's gonna pull harder. Have a little more top in too honestly because it's not bogging out so bad but it will have a little more higher speed too so it should be kind of like a nice mid-range you know so measure your chain out where you want it you got to you kind of got to line it up to where you could pull a link off and it'll line up like end to end sometimes it gets a little funny so you got to pull it off mark it get your trusty <laughs> side grinder Get it nice and smooth. If you get both of them nice and smooth, you can just put a screwdriver in there and pop it off. That's what I was talking about, about lining it up. So I would have lined up right there, like full tension, as, I, like, as much tension as I can get. We just had to back off one so they line up. <laughs> Don't lose any of these. These are very important little guys. Harbor Freight chain toolkit. You can get 15% off these bitchin' pit vipers that I'm wearing right here. Use code CRUZY15. Go to Pit Viper's website, just Google it, it'll pop up. If you got any fashion sense. If you got any fashion sense. <laughs> Excuse my drunk uncle yelling in the back, I'm sorry. Everything that's important is for the ball Torque. A bit of dry extra grease on all the seals and stuff like that. Help them in a little easier. Pops in nice and flush. You can get real fast at that. Yeah? Get two fingers in there and you just whip it around <laughs> it's like that. faster or what? Oh, you'll be spinning deep and hard before you know it. It's just thousands of people start, watching. Start, I know, dude. Start in the middle and work your way. Oh, Jesus. It never ends. It fucking never ends. Oh, I gotta waste my time teaching you things. You're just <laughs> not even doing them. Get down here. Oh, God. All right. It's like I'm breathing just because I don't even need to. There it is. Look at that. See how smooth that was? <laughs> You're done in a matter of seconds.
relax and let it flow. You must focus. Don't waste yourself. Don't waste yourself. You're just wasting all them extra wristy twisties right there. It takes 15 minutes. You gotta keep it in. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> this is bullshit. Take more than that's the One little chick and then spin away. There you go. Spin. <laughs> oh, f off. Keep God it damn. in the hole, though. God damn. It. I can't. I can't. Quick Plug in, dude. No, I didn't. <laughs> no way. Yeah, no. I I didn't get that much fluid in there anyway. Comment down below in every video you've seen Trent pour oil out of the bottom of a primary without putting <laughs> a drain plug in. It's because I fucking catch it halfway through. You guys are done tearing it apart, you know. And yo, on that note, we've uh, got this side pretty much buttoned up. The primary is together, the chain drive is mocked up, it's ready to go when we get the wheels back from powder coat and we get the actual sky nets in here, and then we'll we'll go over all that stuff. But so far, we're making pretty good progress. Uh, this side of the Harley-Davidson mid control setup is done. Twisted T-Industries is setting us, sending us a set of their new floorboards, those will be pretty nice. Little mini floorboards would be pretty rad. Uh, we got the Legends mono shock in there. We got a Salomon seat, Cruise the Originals bars on it so far. We've got our K bar on it. I'm gonna build different mounts for the fairing. I haven't really figured that out yet. I've tried a couple different things, little things I can do so far. Uh, Trent's finishing up a couple things. Matt's gonna put the other side of the mid control on. You've already seen us put mid controls on these a hundred times. But stay posted. We're gonna give this thing away when it's all said and done, but you gotta watch all the videos to know when it's going down. Follow us on Instagram, like, subscribe, cruiseoriginals.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. You got anything, Trent? Uh, no. This thing's gonna be dope. I hope whoever wins it is is as stoked as the last dude. Yeah, that dude was stoked. That was that dude was pumped. And so uh, was the first guy. Yeah, like winning something great, like this is gonna be a. Uh, it's good. This could be something. It's gonna be something special. This thing's gonna be next level for sure. So yeah, stay posted. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>